It is the Bliss here on 94.1 at San Antonio Sports Star. He is Joe Ryan Eagle. I'm Jason Menix. Spurs lose by 26 last night to Oklahoma City. And didn't even feel that close. <laughs> Let's talk about it. The great Sean Elliott joining us here on the Buyers Barricades at Guest Line. Sean, it, it's been a tough year, but last night I was, I was kind of getting kind of angry watching that game. Talk me off the ledge, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, th- that was a hard one. Uh, obviously, um, you know, I was really looking forward to, uh, that matchup while we were on the road trip because, you know, we've been playing better basketball of late, but I knew the other night, as soon as Trey Jones went down, I knew that, uh, we were going to struggle until he gets back, uh, because he's been the real key for us. So obviously, uh, Victor's been tremendous. We, we all know that, but, uh, Trey just enhances everybody's game. The way he pushes the pace, uh, his leadership on the his leadership and his toughness on the court, and I knew that we were going to miss that. And so, you know, there were many times throughout that game last night where we we're just out of sorts. And if we don't have a general on the floor, uh, we just kind of get out of sorts or discombobulated on the offensive end. And that was uh, that was my concern going into the game. So, you know, not. Uh, entirely unexpected you know i thought we had a chance to keep it close i thought at times uh we looked like uh, we were defeated you know outside of a few guys it looked like there were a few guys out there that just uh, knew that we couldn't win the game and uh it, it showed in their performance and so i we still have a lot of work to do uh, but the reason i was looking forward to this because i just wanted to see where we were compared to okc and right now even though we're both young teams, they look like they're a few years ahead of us. Sean, you're the perfect guy to ask because, as you know, I'm a little bit old school, right? So I, I, I think that point guard thing is is pretty important. What was Pops thinking at the beginning of the year with Jeremy Sohan? What what was he trying to do there? What did he think he could do with Sohan? Well, the idea was to have a a, a big lineup. And if you could have a big point guard out there who could defend other guards, and you could also exploit that size on the offensive end of the floor. Uh, it was a win-win situation for us. But it's hard uh, to make a playmaker into a point guard. I, I remember Hank Egan, who was Pop's coach, by the way, at the Air Force Academy, and an assistant here for yeah. years. We were having that conversation many years ago. And Hank Egan, I'll never forget what he said. He said, only God makes point guards. <laughs> And, and he's and he's right. I mean, it's it's just really difficult to kind of instill that mindset, that way of thinking into somebody who uh, doesn't quite have that, you know, the, the, that kind of floor general, uh, the floor uh, court awareness, uh, management, flow of the game, uh, you know, all those things uh, put together. So it's the most demanding position in the game, and it's tough. And so, you know, if you uh, have a point guard, a big point guard that isn't able to dominate small point guards, you know, like a Gary Payton type of thing where you can post him, you can play out of him, uh, he can make all the right passes, then it becomes difficult. And so I, I know what they were trying to do. And in theory, I mean, it was it was a, a great thought. It, it definitely was. I mean, I was excited to see Jeremy at that point guard position and see what he could do, but it didn't really suit him. And so I, when you put Trey back in the starting line, you can see where uh, you know, things run a lot smoother. Uh, even, you know, Jeremy said himself where he feels like he's himself again. You can see in his body language. I think uh, throughout the first 20, uh, 25 games or so, um, he was kind of struggling, trying to get everybody involved, trying to figure it out. And it might have been wearing on him a little bit, but he's a lot more comfortable now. And he's been bit, uh, playing better. He didn't shoot the ball well last night. But, yeah, and of course, for 82 games, you're going to have that, especially when you're a 20-year-old. So uh, I don't worry about him. Uh, we got a, a point guard situation fixed for now, but we've got to get Trey Jones back on the court. Sean Elliott joining us here on the Blitz, 94-1 at San Antonio Sports Star. Uh, clearly, the year hasn't gone the way most of us thought. I think I was at 38 wins, so my prediction for, for the year. Uh, same uh-huh. team as last year, but you've added Wemby. What is, what is – I'm going to say what is the issue, but why do you think this team hasn't been able to win more games? Uh, well, I think there are a lot of things that go into it. I think it's, uh, you know, uh, the mindset, it's the basketball IQ. 
uh, we're not we're not there yet. And uh, you know what I would like to see, Jason, is I'd like to see us learn from our mistakes. And you know that hasn't been consistent enough, where we we still have the same kind of little mistakes that cost us in tight games. Uh, you know, uh, personally, I had us. Uh, you know, I was telling my family and friends that we were going to win more than 38. So I, I had us above that. But I think I you said 40 a, on the show in preseason, right? Is that about right? Uh, I, I, I maybe said that to you in private. I don't know if I said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I was making a lot of assumptions. I mean, you look at last year's team. I really thought if we were healthy last year, we were a 30-win team. You know, we took – there's some veterans, I mean, that, that really helped us out last year that we didn't bring back. I mean, we didn't have Jakob Pertl, who contributed to wins. We didn't have Kaden Bates-Diop, who, uh, even though he didn't start, he contributed to a lot of wins because he had a lot of know-how. Uh, you're talking about a four-year player in college. Uh, you know, we don't have those type of guys anymore. And so we have one, Doug McDermott. and so. Uh, we're, you know, and I thought Jeremy Sohan, he only played, what, like 34 or 36 games last year. So I was assuming that, you know, all the young guys would take another leap forward. And, and uh, to a certain extent, they have, uh, but they're, fig- they're finding out now how, just how difficult it is when games. I mean, uh, it's a little, little mistakes and, uh, you know, two or three minute spans throughout the course of the game that cost us early. I mean, you, I, I feel like we gave away seven or eight games to start the season. I mean, we gave away uh, – we had Miami down at half. We outplayed them in the first. Um, Memphis, the, uh, the same thing. Uh, if, I mean, if I went back and looked at the schedule, there were plenty of times we had leads in that first half, promptly lost them coming out in the third quarter because we just didn't have the leadership on the floor that, that was required. And, and so I think that, that, was a, uh, that was something huge for us. Um, but, you know, it comes down to, um, you know, a lot of things. I mean, Jason, you and I talked a little while back, and, we, you know, the fundamentals of the game, uh, when you have guys that are coming out of college and they've only played for a year or two most, uh, I see all the, you know, the fundamental flaws that end up costing us games where we are out of position on defense, uh, where we don't make the right passes. I mean, it's, I mean, so many many things uh, when you talk about how to make an, a simple entry pass and the low block that that that's gone uh correct positioning on defense so you you're in a, a good help position a lot of that is gone uh close out uh, i don't know how many times we've fouled guys that are shooting three-point balls or foul jump shooters because our closeouts aren't proper and so those those all add up and i think that's a huge contributor to why we haven't won more games John, obviously, we, you know, we talk to Spurs fans all the time, frustrated and want to know what what's going to happen. Everybody loves Victor Wimbanyama. Obviously, this guy is is, is yeah. amazing on the floor. How do mm-hmm. you just in in your opinion, your your frame of mind when it comes to building a team? Are you more a draft pick guy and building that way, or is it a combination of draft picks and adding some veterans? I think it's a combination. Uh, when Big Dave and I came in. Uh, we had Terry Cummings there. You know, we had Mo Cheeks. Uh, we had Caldwell Jones. Uh, later, we had Paul Pressey. I mean, we had a lot of veterans that could help guide us. Uh, Willie Anderson at that time was a second-year player, and he he was, uh, you know, up to date and and would help us key in. He helped me, you know, key in on my defensive matchups and, and give me tips on how to guard guys. But it's a whole different ball game now. I mean, back in the day, we we all watched a lot of games. We watched a lot of basketball. We didn't just watch of players. If you know what I mean. I mean, on our off days, I, I watched basketball games. I watched basketball games growing up. So I felt, and and I, and I stayed four years in college. So I felt like I had a game, and I just needed a little help with the uh, from the veterans as far as. How do I play this guy? Uh, you know, how do I make this cut? Um, how, uh, you know, my rhythm timing, which shots to take, that kind of thing. Uh, and we just don't have a lot of that right now. So we have a lot of young guys that don't have a lot of teachers around them in the locker room or in the huddle 
or on the floor that can help them out. And it's, it's like it's a one man or, or, or two or three man show and it's just the coaching staff trying to hold the players' hands through this process. And it's been tough. So, you know, you need a combination of veterans and young guys, I believe, to get it done. Sean Elliott joining us here on the Blitz, Spurs legend, TV broadcaster. As I hear you say that, Sean, from the the, the average fan doesn't know the NBA the way the way you do and what life is like uh, through practice, um, shoot arounds, getting ready for a game. When, when you're talking about some things like that, you bring up some fundamental during the season. There isn't enough practice time is there to to work on some of that right. because your practice, you're getting ready for your next opponent, uh, not necessarily working on fundamentals, right? Right. I mean, uh, that, uh, I can go all the way back to my first practice in Arizona. I mean, the first 45 minutes of practice was uh, fundamentals, relation, uh, ball and man relation, opening up, letting you eye through a screen, uh, the proper uh, way to deny uh, how to force a guy a certain way. Uh, how do you deny how to open up? You know, all that stuff is, unless you go to that for, you know, three or four years, every single day, uh, you're going to revert back to bad habits. You're going to play high school style uh, defense. And so coaches in the NBA, like when I got my first year, my fr- I mean, not my first year, I mean, pretty much my entire career in the league, coaches could practice you however they wanted to practice you. And so like my first two and a half years with Larry Brown, it didn't matter. I mean, today, or they, they play tomorrow. We had a game yesterday. We'd be on the court for three hours today. We, we'd be on the court. We'd have tape practice. And we'd be out there for three hours. And we would go through uh, fundamentals. We'd go through defense, we'd through offense. Now, with the new rules and the Players Association, you can only practice the guys for, you know, an hour and a half or so. You've got to get guys off the court and get them rest. So you don't have time. The coaches today, and I, I talked to all these assistant coaches, uh, coaches they played with or played against, uh, all these guys tell me the same thing. You know, you don't have time every day to go through the fundamentals of the game. You're inserting guys into complex schemes and formulas when they don't know basic math. And so that's a hard thing to do. You know, doesn't have time to sit there and teach defensive slides and, and deny position and, you know, things like that. He can point them out to you, you can show them to you, but it's not a situation where you can go through that every single day. You're working on sets, you're working on plays, you're working on defense schemes, but at the same time, you have to have the basic fundamentals down to be able to implement those schemes on the defensive and offensive, offensive side of the ball. And if you don't have that basic fundamentals, it's a struggle, uh, you know, just to be able to run plays properly. I mean, there, there are lots of plays. I mean, if Spurs fans had watched the, the big three throughout all those years, there was a play coming down the stretch every single time. You can go back and watch games if you want. And it was called Floppy Down. And it was a backdoor play for Tony Parker. And Timmy Duncan was at the elbow. And Timmy would throw in the back door. And Pop would call this play in the last minute, minute and a half. And it was always uh, to get a bucket in a tight game. And Tony, Manu, Timmy, they had the wherewithal and the knowledge and the study to be able to pull this play off. And I, I don't know, it was about five or six years ago, I said, Pop, how come you guys don't run floppy down anymore? I said, we, we, our guys, you know, they, don't, they can't run it. And so, you know, you're, you're dealing with a whole different uh, group of players that, have, that had experience and had know-how and guys that are still trying to figure that out. You know, Sean, that brings up a great point. And, and I oftentimes, and, and because I was just so impressed with Tony Parker as a 19 year old kid when he came in, and Greg Popovich was all over that young man. I mean, dressing <laughs> yeah. him down on the court and, and just all over him. Tony talks about that now and, and how he wanted that because it helped him improve. And I know players have evolved, and it looks like Coach Pop has evolved as well because he doesn't do that anymore. Is that because of the type of player? Or why do you think Pop is, is different? He's still obviously the greatest coach of all time, but his style is a little bit different now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because kids are different. Kids are different. I mean, uh, you know, Pop got on me. I mean, he said unholy things to me. <laughs> Tony Parker, Manu, Timmy. <laughs> 
uh, he got, he, uh, let me tell you, uh, the, the year that I was uh, out and I was working to come back and get on the court, uh, it was 2001, 2002. Uh, I wasn't really retired. I figured I'd come back and play. And we're at the old Continental Airlines Arena playing the Nets. And I went in at halftime and I was in the coach's locker room and I could hear Pop in the player's locker room. And he was on those three, the big three, so hard, it was unimaginable. I mean, I had almost never heard anything like that ever. And those three guys were able to accept it. They were able to take in what he was saying because what he was saying was right. It was the truth. And they, they handled it. It's harder now for him to say that to these younger guys because you, you, you're in danger of losing them. So he has to be a lot softer, a lot gentler with them. And I think he's done a great job with that. But again, it's, it's a whole different era of players. I, I, I think anybody would, anybody that's just out there in the workforce uh, would agree with, you know, the mentality that has changed over the years uh, as, as, you know, as opposed to like guys like me who are old school, you guys are old school, as opposed to a little bit newer generation, which doesn't mean that they're, they're bad kids. That, that's not what I'm saying. It's just a different way of motivi- motivating them and getting the message across to them. That's what's changing. I think Sean and just he, called us old. Yeah, I think he did. But you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Sean has said nothing but the of truth course. here today, right? You, we all know yeah. you're old, Joe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. So, you know, it's just, it's just a different way of coaching. Uh, and Pop's been very adaptable. Uh, you know, that's been really, I think that's been the key to his longevity because he's been able to adapt from, you know, guys like me and, and David and, and me to Tony and Manu and adapt the, the playing style was number one. He adapted that. And then he adapted his coaching style where, uh, you know, he's constantly teaching, but it's a, it's a kinder, softer, gentler pop. Well, and again, I think that's actually, you probably end up sh- should be giving him credit as a leader to adapting on knowing how to motivate your guys and what's going to connect with them to try to get the best out of them is the great Sean Elliott is joining us here on the blitz sean when i when i'm watching broadcasts i love when you're going through replays and teaching because i think you do a great job at doing that Uh, while obviously with an eight win team uh tell us some areas where you've seen great improvement from the beginning of the season until now the little things that we can get excited about as we look towards the future the biggest thing i I, you know i've seen is what uh, has come from victor uh, because he he's a sponge and he's uh, he's, he's uh, I mean he I, I tell everybody he's just an anomaly. He's a really smart uh, young man. Uh, he wants to be great. He wants to put the work in. And I and I and I, there were several examples. Like there was one example in the Clipper game when we were playing early on, where he was open in the low block and there was nobody on his back. And this is when we really had trouble just finding him on the court. And instead of holding that position, he just kept gravitating out to the wing, to the wing. His defender finally caught up to him, and he caught the ball, you know, 15, 16, 18 feet away from the basket when he already had position. Now he's done a great job, a better job, holding position, uh, figuring out uh, his footwork. He's got these spin moves, and he's around the low block where if he's feeling pressure on one side or the other, he spins away from it. Uh, and he's constantly open for lobs. When our guys adjust even more to that, he's going to be even more dangerous. Uh, but he's learning how to use his body more. He's getting to the free throw line a whole lot more. Uh, so he's uh, figuring that out, and he's and it's been rapid. And so that that's nice to see. His shot selection is better. Uh, the only time I really see him take a four shot is when he hasn't touched the ball in three or four or five possessions down the court, and he's trying to inject himself in the game. And so that, that to me, is perfectly understandable. Uh, but I, I see big improvements in his game and his, his just figuring out how to get this level. Well, he, he played admission, no that's doubt. for sure. Um, and incredible yeah. seeing what, it, what he is doing, that is for sure. Sean Elliott, Spurs legend. TV analyst, real quick, Sean, if it's okay to ask, how's Bill doing? I heard him last night, but how, how, how's Bill doing? He's, do, he's doing really, really well. Uh, he sent us all a text, and his, uh, his 
treatments are going great. Um, I saw him uh, when I saw him last night. I just thought he looked really good. I said, "Bill, you you got some of your color back." <laughs> we started laughing. <laughs> uh, uh, but he's he's been upbeat through the whole thing. Um, uh, he's you know taking this battle head on, and uh, it's been inspiring for a lot of us. And uh, you know, we all love Bill. I mean, the crew. Uh, he, he's my he's my guy. I mean, so so uh, we all love Bill to death, and and we want to see him around for a long, long time. We want to, you know, I want to see him calling games for a long time. And so uh, he's just, uh, you know, he's just trucking along and doing very well. And you know, I I we hope to get some uh, some more good uh, good news here in the next six months or so. But he's um, no, I, th- I think Bill's handling this as well as anybody on earth would. Please give him our best, Sean. Will you do that? For sure. Absolutely. For sure. Sean, always appreciate it, man. Back, back to golf practice for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I was already out there today. Joe Joe would appreciate this. I, I call it cheating. I was out there cheating today. And you know what cheating means. <laughs> that means you're working on means you're working on your short game. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's uh-huh. what it is. That's, mm-hmm. that's how you beat everybody, man. Go out there and cheat. Go out there and work on your short game. You've that's been ducking you me for years, Elliot. You've been ducking me for yeah, years. Yeah, well, because I'm a smart man. I hear <laughs> I hear rumors about you. You grew up on the country club. <laughs> yeah. Drinking all the palmers with your pinky out. I, I know you, Joe. Yeah, you, you grew up with a golf club in your hand, man. You can still <laughs> take his money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> John, always appreciate it, man. We'll catch up soon. All right. Thanks, Sean. Sean Elliott on the Buyers Barricades guest line, where they provide traffic control, rental, and sales for San Antonio and beyond online at buyersbarricades.com.